CNN hosts claim that Twitter alternative Parler is a threat to democracy. The Millie Maga march was incredible until Antifa showed up. Plus, the Trump legal team has uncovered some shocking information. All that and more, I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13 minute news hour. And God bless the United States of America. All right, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Monday. I hope you had a great weekend. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start with big tech, big media, and the alternatives that are developing, that are out there, and how the left is reacting to it. Because people are fed up with big tech. We've seen it. Facebook, Google, Twitter, YouTube, censoring conservative voices. There was no bigger example than when the New York Post published their story, a legitimate story, on Hunter and Joe Biden's corruption. The big media ignored it like it wasn't even there. No investigative reporting at all. Social media, Facebook and Twitter censored it. You couldn't share it. You could be blocked just for trying to share it. That's what they did. They closed down the New York Post Twitter account and forcing them, telling them you can't have it back unless you pull down these stories. It's absolutely incredible. So the fallout, of course, is that people are looking for alternatives. They are frustrated. On the media side, people are turning away even from Fox News, and I've covered that a lot. They're looking at alternatives like Newsmax and One America News. On the social media side, you've got companies like Rumble and Parler that are jumping, exploding now with users, people coming over. So let's talk about Parler, for example. That is an equivalent to Twitter, but there is a big difference. Big difference on Parler is that they respect free speech. They don't censor conservative voices. And the left, they are freaked out about it. They are losing their minds because people are searching out alternatives. On CNN, they even consider that a threat to leave these big tech companies and go to alternatives. Check out CNN's Brian Stelter talking about this. First, he talks about Newsmax, and in essence, the people who watch Newsmax. Check this out. Newsmax has seen an extraordinary surge in viewership, still a lot lower than CNN or Fox, but this was a channel that had 50,000 viewers before the election, and now sometimes it has half a million viewers. There's clearly an audience out there uh, for a channel that is so far right that they deny Biden is the president-elect, that they promote voter fraud innuendo all day long. Wow. Promote voter fraud innuendo. There are tons of affidavits out there, eyewitness accounts of voter fraud, and yet the media aren't investigating it at all. They're just pretending it doesn't exist. Then Stelter goes on to talk about social media. I think big picture, Pamela, here's the concerning uh, trend line here. People are going more and more into their own echo chambers, mm -hmm. more and more into so their own say. bubbles, especially Trump voters. There's this new social media app called Parler getting a lot of attention because conservatives are leaving, saying they're leaving Twitter and Facebook, going off to Parler because they believe Parler is a safer space for them. This is unreal. Stelter actually believes that it's a concerning trend line that people are leaving Facebook and Twitter saying they're going into their own echo chamber of ideas. That's what the left does, folks. If you don't think like they do, talk like they do, act like they do, they push you out. They'll call you a racist. They'll call you a bigot. They'll block you. They'll censor you. Conservatives want the facts. They want the facts so we can make up our own ideas. Yet that is a threat to the left. And Stelter just goes on. He says that this is a bad idea. I mean, it, it just makes no sense, folks, to talk about ideas, to want free speech. That is the difference. That's the difference between Twitter and Parler. People aren't going to Parler because it's a safe space. It's because they respect free speech. And here's more from Stelter. What we're seeing is even more of a bunker mentality in right-wing media. And ultimately, that's not good for the country. Not good for the country. Oh, but watching CNN and MSNBC, that is good for you. The left freaks out, folks. They don't want people to get the conservative viewpoint at all. But left-wing propaganda, oh, that's enlightened. That's intellectual. That's okay. They are so freaked out that people are leaving these platforms and going elsewhere. CNN's Pamela Brown even took it a step further. No, it's, it's not good. It's a threat to democracy um, that these people are in echo chambers and they're getting fed a diet of lies, essentially. Uh, Brian lies. Stelter. That's, that's what it is. Thanks. Yep. A threat to democracy. 
You can't make this stuff up. They actually said that. They believe these social media alternatives are a threat to democracy. And why? Because they are freaked out about losing control. They want to control the flow of information, what gets out there, how it gets out there, what's reported. And if they lose that control, if people start thinking for themselves, then they're on their way out. They absolutely know it. And that's why they're freaking out. So next, let's talk about the Million MAGA March. But first, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. And when you do, please hit that bell so you'll be notified. We're making our push now for 150,000 subscribers, and we can do it with your help. All right, let's talk about the Million MAGA March because it was absolutely incredible. And to preview that, to build up to it, think about the whole summer, the rioting and looting, the vandalism, the assault, the killings from BLM and Antifa. They, it was crazy, folks. Crazy chaos that the Democrats said nothing about. And then leading into the election, even news outlets like Fox News, when businesses were boarding up, they tried to make this equivalency that these business owners were afraid that BLM could riot, but also Trump supporters could go crazy if President Trump ended up losing. Well, guess what? Over last weekend, they declared Joe Biden the winner. No rioting, no looting. Trump supporters didn't do anything about it. So we know that was a false narrative because we know they were only boarding up because of Antifa. Well, now fast forward to this weekend and we have an actual legitimate peaceful protest. Trump supporters from around the country gathered in D.C. to protest this voter fraud, but also to rally to show support for President Trump. Check out this picture. So many people, people gathered together all day long, no violence, just showing support for President Trump. That is, until Antifa and BLM moved in later in the day and everything changed. You're talking about people getting sucker punched, MAGA hats and other items being stolen, families being terrorized, chased down the streets by these thugs. It was outrageous, and here's the story. Supporters of President Donald Trump were targeted by counter-protesters in Washington, D.C. Saturday after the Million MAGA March and violence broke out in the city. Reporters on the ground captured multiple incidents, particularly at Black Lives Matter Plaza, where Trump supporters were swarmed, harassed, and at times physically assaulted as the march wrapped up. Thousands of Trump supporters arrived in D.C. to attend the march, voicing support for Trump and backing allegations of voter fraud in the election. Can you believe this? What happened to unity, folks? What happened to coming together? This was a legitimate, peaceful protest and then you have these thugs hurting people, hurting and terrorizing people for just showing support for President Trump. And here's more. As the march came to an end, some pro-Trump supporters made their way to BLM Plaza where counter-protesters were waiting. In one incident, a female Trump supporter walking with her young children was harassed. A fight broke out and one of her daughters was seen crying as police escorted the family out. Later in the day, a large group of counter-protesters wearing black block mobilized and marched to the plaza. Upon arrival, they declared the area officially off limits to Trump supporters. Fights began breaking out left and right in the street with pro-Trump individuals becoming the only target. One woman got her hat stolen, her flag stolen, and was hit in the back of the head after being forced to retreat from the area. Another young couple was harassed and had water and other objects thrown as the female screamed, visibly scared by the incident. This is just sick, folks. And here's the thing, the media ignored, it was a total blackout on this event, a peaceful protest, thousands and thousands and thousands of Trump supporters gathering together to rally for the president, they ignored it. And then they went out and ignored the violence. They completely ignored that people were getting hurt and it was all from Antifa and BLM. They just ignored it and just shut it all out as if it didn't even exist. And here's the other thing. Where's the denunciations? We're supposed to all come together for unity and all of this stuff. But Joe Biden, I looked at his Twitter feed. It was absolutely silent on this. Nothing at all. Kamala Harris, hers was silent. Nothing at all. But she does have tweets like this. Joe Biden and I will eliminate the Trump tax cuts for the biggest corporations and super wealthy, then get to work building an economy that works for working families. Ah, like the economy that President Trump helped build, the one where middle-class wages actually went up 
where unemployment was at record lows. You mean an economy like that? That's Harris. Nothing about the violence from Antifa and BLM. So next, let's give an update on what the Trump legal team is looking at, because the information that comes out is shocking, folks. And I'm not talking about fringe websites with people you've never heard of talking about theories. I'm talking about bigwig, legitimate folks on Trump's legal team going on major networks and talking about what they found. Eyewitness accounts of these voting machines and the voting machine software that can be used to manipulate elections and has been used to manipulate elections around the world. It's absolutely stunning. So Maria Bartiromo was interviewing both Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell. And if you've ever heard Sidney Powell, she is absolutely awesome. She doesn't mess around at all. She has her facts straight. We're going to get into some of her statements. But first, Bartiromo was asking Giuliani about this software and what could happen. The, the Smartmatic software. I mean, you just said it all. This is a, a Smartmatic, a Delaware entity registered in Boca Raton, Florida. Activities in Caracas, Venezuela. The, the voting machines were used, Dominion voting machines were used in Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Imagine that. All the crucial states, all those six states just decide on election night, we're going to stop counting. We're going to come back tomorrow. It's absolutely crazy, folks. That doesn't happen. And yet it happened in all those crucial states that use this software. Then Maria brought on Sidney Powell and she gave this update. We have sworn witness testimony of why the software was designed. It was designed to rig elections. He was fully briefed on it. He saw it happen in other countries. It was exported internationally for profit by the people that are behind Smartmatic and Dominion. Folks, this is scary stuff, and that's why I am sharing it. And Powell went on to describe how the FBI has known about this for years. They've received complaints about these machines and this software from Democrats and Republicans, people like Elizabeth Warren, Amy Klobuchar, complaining about this. What hasn't anything been done? What is going on? And then Powell went on and talked about how the system can be manipulated. They can stick a thumb drive in the machine or upload software to it, even from the internet. They can do it from Germany or Venezuela even. They can remote access anything. They can watch votes in real time. They can shift votes in real time. We've identified mathematically the exact algorithm they used and plan to use from the beginning to modify the votes in this case to make sure Biden won. This is unreal, folks, and it's scary. We've already seen, I've talked about it. I talked about it some on our Saturday live stream show. If you missed that, you can check it out right here. But we, we all know, we all saw through the summer what went on with big tech and with the media and with polling to alter the election, to suppress the vote, to paint a false narrative. Now we've got this information on the software and the machines themselves. This has to be looked at. The problem is, is we've got a short time frame, but these people seem confident with their information. And that's why I just, we have to follow it. I'm going to keep presenting it and let this play out because if this is going on, then we have to stop it because this is a threat to our republic at the highest level. And to me, if the people that are involved, if this is really happening, we need treason. We need these people tried for treason because they are trying to take down the United States of America as we know it, and that cannot stand. We need to fight back. We need to be ready. Next, I want to talk to you about this so-called call for unity that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and the left-wing media are trying to push when we all know that means conservatives, shut up, be quiet, don't interfere, we're running the show now. That's what they actually mean. But that, in general, is even more bogus when you look at what people are actually saying. They don't care about unity. They don't care about working with Trump supporters. Here's just a collection of quotes from a news story I saw where it just lists people, left-wing radicals, ready to go after Trump supporters, not work with them, not be inclusive, not be unified. Check this out. Any Republican now promoting rejection of an election or calling not to follow the will of the voters or making baseless allegations of fraud should never serve in office, join a corporate board, 
find a faculty position, or be accepted into polite society. We have a list. Jennifer Rubin, The Washington Post. Is anyone archiving these Trump sycophants for when they try to downplay or deny their complicity in the future? I foresee decent probability of many deleted tweets, writings, photos. That's AOC. But folks, that's not even that's not even the worst. They definitely get worse. And here's more. So let's brace ourselves. The terrorist Trump must be defeated, must be destroyed, must be devoured. And then he and his enablers and his supporters and his collaborators must be prosecuted and convicted and removed from our society. That's Keith Oberman over at ESPN and MSNBC. Me First capitalists are going to be the first people lined up against the wall and shot in the revolution. I'll happily provide video commentary to Costello, former CEO of Twitter. Absolutely disgusting. This is the call for unity? Why aren't the media reporting all this stuff? That's not unity. That's blacklist. That's going after Trump supporters for supporting the president of the United States. Folks, this is some serious times that we're in right now. I'm going to keep reporting this stuff. I'm going to keep bringing you the information. And we have to act. We have to stand up against the left because if we back down now, we'll never have another shot. Folks, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. And when you do, please hit that bell so you'll be notified. And we'll see you next time. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. Okay, friends, thanks so much for watching. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell so you'll be notified. And here's a special video just for you so you can watch even more of the 13-minute news hour. And don't forget to check out GOPUSA.com for the best in conservative news and commentary. We'll see you next time.